Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 5 of 2022, amending some provisions of Articles of Association and Bylaw of the Gulf Petrochemical Industries Company GPIC, established as per Decree Law 18 of 1979. The law stipulates that the phrase the Kingdom of Bahrain shall replace the phrase the State of Bahrain wherever it appears in the Articles of Association and Bylaw of the Gulf Petrochemical Industries Company BSC. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Lim Ayyad, yesterday attended the taping of the final episode of reality TV program Biban, which is part of Al Amal Projects, the investment arm of the Hope Fund. His Highness affirmed that supporting youth projects embodies the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in highlighting the talents and promising entrepreneurs and noted that the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa contributed in achieving Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. His Highness stated that the visions of Al Amal projects are in, in line with the visions of His Majesty the King in supporting the youth's creations and talents in various fields, affirming his keenness to support the follow up on their projects. His Highness added that since the launch of this program there have been distinguished projects. He stated that he gladly followed up on the industrial sector projects in the fourth and final episode which resulted in many industrial projects in which His Highness expressed interest for the sector's role in the Kingdom's economic vision. His Highness added that Biban program has many contributions in highlighting the projects of a large group of promising entrepreneurs and providing them with the opportunity to present their projects to a group of investors, stating that Al Amal projects play an, play an important role in supporting the participants and providing them with a platform to meet strategic investors. His Highness met with the participants and the team supervising the program, praising the work team's efforts and their keenness to produce the program in the best manner. The Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Assam Khalaf, hailed the Cabinet's approval of a memorandum regarding the afforestation plan in the Kingdom. Khalaf said that this plan aims to double the current number of trees to reach 3.6 million trees by 2035. He noted that there are a number of initiatives and policies that aim to increase afforestation and motivate all parties to participate in this plan to reach the desired goal. He also indicated that the Ministry is working to implement a number of projects in the Kingdom's governorate to beautify streets, intersections, housing towns and parks. Khalaf stressed that the government's support led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to expand afforestation and increase the green area would preserve the environment and achieve sustainable development. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus included the drug Paxlovid manufactured by Pfizer Company as part of the treatment protocol for COVID-19 patients in Bahrain. Paxlovid therapy is the first and newest drug to be taken orally for five days to treat existing cases of the virus and it is made of a combination of two types of antiviral drugs and is given as tablets. Infectious diseases consultant at the military hospital, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, said that a recent scientific study has proven the effectiveness of this drug by 89% and it works to reduce the reproduction of the virus in the infected person's body. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,230,265 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,209,003 had taken the second and 961,425 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 30,205 with 4,601 recoveries, 3,006 registered new cases and two deaths. There are 72 active cases receiving treatment and 18 patients in critical condition. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. 
The Saudi permanent delegation to the United Nations in New York delivered a statement on behalf of the GCC countries during a session of the United Nations General Assembly in which it clarified the position of the GCC states on Ukraine. The GCC states are following with concern the developments in Ukraine and affirm their support for all efforts aimed to resolving the crisis through dialogue and diplomacy and to continue working to implement the agreements concluded between the concerned parties approved by the Security Council and Resolution 2202. The GCC states also affirmed their support to the international efforts exerted to reduce tension and escalation and initiate truce measures to ensure a return of stability and allow for political discussions that lead to a political solution to the crisis. The GCC states stressed the need to adhere to the principles of international law and the Charter of the United Nations, especially the settlement of international disputes by peaceful means, to refrain from the use of threats of force and to respect the sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity of states. The GCC states would like to stress the depth of their relations with all concerned parties and they call on all parties to exercise restraint and work to end this crisis as quickly as possible and through diplomatic means in a manner that meets the interests of all parties and in a manner that spares civilians and the consequences of escalation and further humanitarian difficulties. Russia launched a wide-ranging attack on Ukraine today, hitting cities and bases with airstrikes or shelling as civilians piled into trains and cars to flee. Ukraine's government said Russian tanks and troops rolled across the border in a full-scale war that could rewrite the geopolitical order and whose fallout already reverberated around the world. In an unleashing Moscow's aggressive action, President Vladimir Putin deflected global condemnation and cascading new sanctions. He threatened any foreign country at attempting to interfere with consequences. The chief of the NATO alliance said that the act of war shattered peace in Europe, joining a chorus of world leaders who decried the attack.